Hello, hello, First Baptist Church of Glen Arden International family. My name is Asia Nicholson, and I just want to welcome you to our Sunday service today. We are having a young adult worship experience here. It is fifth Sunday here in Glen Arden, Maryland, and we are so excited to join you. However, I'm not alone, you guys. I need I need a virtual drum roll. <laughs> I'm here with my big sister, Tamra C. Hello. <laughs> hey, now. I love it. The hoo- hey, if you do it from yeah. your soul. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, my, my hey, girl. Hey. Hi, hey. family. <laughs> Happy Sunday to you. Listen, drop in the chat and tell us where you are joining us from, mm-hmm. whether it is New Zealand or New Mexico. It may be Tennessee or Tanzania. Drop Ooh. in the chat and tell us where you are hanging out with us from today. We are so, so excited that you're here. We'll definitely make sure that you share this link with someone who you know needs an encounter with God because it's going to be a good Sunday. It's going to be a good Sunday. It's it's going to be a good Sunday, just like the last Sunday. How about that? But I feel like we need to show them what happened last Sunday, Because right? last Sunday was the bomb. It com. was the bomb. It was com. so good. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's run it back to show everyone what happened last Sunday. Let's run it back. What I tell you, something else, right? Something else. Something else. If you missed it and want to see the entire service, make sure that you tune in on our YouTube channel inside FBCG so that you can go on ahead and peep that phenomenal word from our beloved pastor. So we do want to get some shout outs, okay? Mm -hmm, Because we got mm -hmm. some people tuning in from a little bit of everywhere, everywhere, okay? I got Mr. Williams from Grovetown, Georgia. Hey, Mr. Williams. We got Erica Wilkins from Austin, Texas. How about that? We've got Charmaine, who is new to joining. Um, She just got here in PG County, and she's interested in visiting. So please make sure you come visit her. We're right down the street. Come on, visit. Mm -hmm. Um, And we've got people... We have a lot of people from Texas and a lot hey, of Texas. people. Upper Marlboro, Bowie, Bowie, Bowie. Hey, y'all, in the Upper Marlboro, Bowie, Largo area, you still got time to get here. You still got you sure time know. to get here. Come on. Okay. Come, Come on. on. If y'all want to stop and meet a location and make how the about pilgrimage. That? Make the pilgrimage, okay? <laughs> Carpool in Jesus' name. <laughs> how about so, that? So, okay, so we're here with the young adult experience here yeah. on Fifth Sunday. So, we have a guest preacher today. We're not going to tell you who it is. We're not going to tell you who it is. But not you tell need you. to, it's going to rock your socks, I bet, because. That's all we do here at BCG. How about that? So what is something that you're looking forward to here? Well, it's funny you say that because I always look forward to the message. You know, whether it's one of our ministers in-house or for someone that is visiting our church, the message on Fifth Sunday is always something. One, I think it's applicable to young adults, but I think it's something everyone can pull from. So I'm always looking forward to it. And I'm not going I'm not going to tell y'all who here, but I'm just saying he may not need to come back. He may not. Because that's just how bomb just, he is. Just the history. I don't know if y'all ready for just it. Just the okay? history of what we know about this how about that uh, make sure your <laughs> wi-fi is strong because it may go sure out all right strong. listen i'm Ooh. really excited about the gathering of young adults all yeah. in one place i feel like young adult sunday is a is a time at church where literally all of the young adults can come together comfortably mm-hmm. commune with mm-hmm. one another and experience god in so many different ways yeah and so we're really excited we're excited for you guys to stick around with us we can't wait to see you for the post yeah. show um, I think we should toss it to service so that they can enjoy working. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and toss it we're so that y'all. We're going to toss it because okay. we'll talk your heads off. miss it, okay? okay? But definitely make sure that you come back yes. with us. We're going to hang out right here for our post show after service. Have a great day and a great week on purpose. We'll see you soon. I'm Glenn Arden. Can we stand to our feet and give God praise? 
Is anybody thankful in this place? Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. If you're thankful in this place, can you give God a praise in here? I came to have church today. I came to give Him glory today. I came to give thanks today. And if you have breath, you should praise Ye. I don't hear you. 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 This is the day that the Lord this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. No matter what the circumstances is, can you praise Him today? If you're tired and fatigued, can you still praise Him today? If the situation still is the same, can you still praise Him? Let everything Let everything That has breath Praise the Lord Do this for me Blow on your hand Blow on it Blow on your hand If you feel something You should Praise the Lord but I'm grateful this morning. I don't know about you, I'm thankful this morning. I don't know about you, but I came to give God what he deserves. Hallelujah. 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 Let the routine Thanksgiving, I'm coming with praise because today is the day that he has made. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be in the world. My name is Josh and I get to serve as one of the ministers here at First Baptist Church of Glenard and today is Young Adult Sunday. Today is Young Adult Sunday, so Young Adult Sunday pastor allows the young adults uh, to take over the service. Don't, it don't mean that it's, it's not for the seasoned saints. We just get to lead the praise. We just get to lead the praise. So all my young adults, if you have breath, can we praise how young adults praise? If you are thankful, <laughs> hallelujah, amen. So listen, what, what I want you to do uh, before we get started is uh, this morning online, uh, if you were watching, uh, and in the, even in the building, uh, let's go ahead uh, and if you know one person who needs a word from the Lord, there might be somebody who's struggling, this might be somebody who you know that's unsaved. What I want us to do is I want us to evangelize today. It's so easy now to spread the gospel. Uh, you can simply do it by sharing the link. So pull out your phone, y'all can go to the Facebook page real quick, copy and paste it and send it to somebody who needs to see this service today. Wherever you are, it's easy for you online, just go ahead and click uh, the share button. And while we do that, allow us to reintroduce yes. ourselves. We are FBCG. We are the church. This is the hour for the kingdom. Yeah. No way to time to shine our light for the kingdom. What a privilege. What a privilege. And honor. And honor. Just a service. Just a service. Make his praise glorious. Every living thing. Yes, 
to be in church today. If you, if you will, will you grab your Bibles or your iPads, your iPhones, uh, whatever device you have the scriptures on, the Holy Scriptures, I would like for you to turn with me to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I will be reading from the 7th to the 10th verse. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 12th chapter starting at verse 7. Say amen when you get there, will you? And it reads, And least I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations. A thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me. Least I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. Huh. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, and in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord is blessed. Will you pray with me, Lord? I thank you for today. Thank you for waking us up this morning, bringing us to this place. God, I pray right now that you be with us during this time. I pray for the sinner, the backslider. I pray for those who don't know you, God, that somebody will receive the good news of you today. So God, I just praise you in this moment. God, I pray for those who are in this room or who are watching online who might be suffering with depression, anxiety, a life situation that they don't have the power to get out of themselves. God, I pray that you will meet them where they, wherever they may be. God, I thank you. I praise, I praise you. And I, I pray, Heavenly Father, that during this time, you will allow that everything that is done give you glory. Let every lyric sung give you glory. Let every key that's played give you glory. Let every beat of the drum give you glory. Let every camera movement give you glory. Let every usher movement give you glory. Let every greeting, every high five, every air hug, every fist bump give you glory. So that your name will get all the glory, the honor, and the praise. We thank you for what you're going to do today. Bless the man of God the word that will be brought forth, that somebody will receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Uh, now what we're going to do is uh, we want to welcome our first-time guest. So if you are a first-time guest and you are online, 
uh, what I would like for you to do is I want you to put a one in the chat. Uh, even though uh, you are not physically here, we have First Baptist members and people tuning in all over the world. So if this is your first time tuning in, no matter where you are, put a one in the chat and, and put where you're watching from because we have some people who want, want to be social with you while you are distant. Amen. And then if this is your first time in this building to worship with us here, would you please stand? Any first time, don't be shy now, go on stand. That's right, amen. Please remain standing. Praise the Lord. Uh, on behalf of Pastor John K. Jenkins, please remain, remain standing for two seconds. Uh, on behalf of our pastor, who happens to be my dad, Pastor John K. Jenkins Sr., First Lady Trina Jenkins, and the elders and leadership of this church, we welcome you. You could be anywhere else in the world, but you, something told you to come here today, and we are grateful to have you. Amen? So listen, for those of you online and those of you in the building, there's a QR code that is going to come up on the screen. Uh, you can simply take a picture of that. You can scan that QR code. Uh, and you can get all, a lot of information about more about our church, about the things that we have going on here at our church, because this here is a good church to get connected to. Amen? So if you want to learn more about us, you can do that, at that QR, QR, with that QR code. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to greet you with a, a friendly uh, fist bump, an elbow bump, an air hug, a shoulder, you know, bump, maybe. But... We're going to greet you as we greet one another. Amen? Let's do that. Let's go ahead and greet our guests and greet one another.
walk out healed. If you walk in bound, you're going to walk out free. Just a mention of his name. Just a mention of his name. Just a mention of his name. Everything can change. 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 Come on. Everything can change. Come on. Come on, every every. Yeah. Everything can change. Everything, everything can change. Yeah. 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 His name is Jesus. We call his name Jesus. Our Father Jesus. Son of the living God Jesus. The Lamb that was slain for me, Jesus. The one who died for me, Jesus. The one who sacrifices life for me, Jesus. The one who can heal anybody named Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Master Jesus. The awesome one, Jesus. There's something about the name Jesus. The great I am Jesus. The lily of the valley, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. He said, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I draw all unto me. He said, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw on. If we could just sing that sweetly. He said, if I, he said, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw only unto me. Unto me. Last time. He said, if I, he said, if I, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all FBCG Monthly Fellowships for Grace Girls, Singles, Men, Couples, and Other Ministries are on summer break for the month of August. There'll be no monthly fellowships online or on-site next month. Enjoy your summer break with family and friends and be sure to update your prayer list for friends, relatives, associates, neighbors, and co-workers. Vision Magazine is published four times a year. It keeps you, the congregation, connected and informed about different activities and events occurring at First Baptist. This magazine is also a resource to share testimonies and spotlight outstanding service from members. See the latest issue on the church website at fbcglenarden.org slash publications. Next Sunday is College Financial Aid Sunday. We'll recognize and celebrate our youth who have graduated high school and plan to attend college this fall. So be sure to wear your favorite college paraphernalia to support our youth and rep your school. Men, save the date for the Mighty Men of Valor National Men's Conference, back for the 20th and final year, coming this fall, November 11th and 12th. For more information, visit menofvalor.com. That's the news for this week. You can find more details about these events and others on our church website at fbcglenarden.org. Praise the Lord, First Baptist. Uh, we come to our uh, portion of service. Here. It's, our, it's offering time. It's our time to give to God what is rightfully His. 
First Baptist, uh, you are such great givers, uh, not just because uh, you give continually and you do it well, but because you are obedient to the scriptures that our pastor stresses. And we are grateful for that. And because of that obedience and because of that discipline, we are able to do a, a lot of things here at First Baptist, such as have a great dynamic young adult ministry, different young adult ministries. We have many different ministries, departments that serve the community, not just locally, but what we call now First Baptist, globally, both global and local. Amen? And it's because of your giving. So uh, during this time, uh, as we give, you can, uh, the information will come up on the screen, the website. You can go on our website right there that's on the screen, or you can go click the give button, uh, and you can give directly there. If you're making a check, you can make it out to FBCG. Uh, and if you, you know, if you are not really tech savvy uh, and you have cash or you have a, 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 a hard check, there are uh, boxes, offering boxes on around the doors. The ushers can direct you to them on your way out. You can just simply drop it uh, in that box if that's what you would like to do. Amen. So let's go ahead and pray over our obedience to give today. Lord, we thank you today. We give you praise, honor and glory. Not just for the seed, but for the seed giver. God, I pray right now that uh, you will take this offering, bless it as we consecrate it, and give it to you to continue to build your kingdom. We thank you for the grace and the mercy that you have bestowed upon us, God. We thank you for providing for us, God. And so, God, we just give your name the glory and honor, God, as we give back to you what is rightfully yours. Bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, it's Young Adult Sunday. I'm, I, said that, I think I said that once. I'm going to say it again. Uh, so, Pastor, let the young adults take over the service a little bit. So, uh, we brought in a guest preacher. And while we prepare for that guest preacher, we're going to receive our young adult music ministry here. So, as we receive them, let's prepare our hearts to hear a word from the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. One thing that sets our Jesus apart from everybody's love is that the fact that his love never fades. His love is always consistent. It never changes depending on the way that we feel, but God's love remains the same. If you don't mind, open up your hearts to this song. Higher than the mountains that I face Stronger than the power of the grave Constant through the trial and the change This one thing remains This one thing remains Cause your love never fails, never gives, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives, it never runs out on me. Your love. Mm -hmm. Come on, let's sing it, family. Sing higher than. Sing stronger than, stronger than the power of the grace. Constant through the trial. This one thing remains. This one thing remains. Your love never fails, it never gives up. Never runs out on me.
feel it right there. If you don't mind me just taking a couple seconds and let's just lift up our love towards heaven. Let's receive his love. Daddy, dump your love on us. That's been consistent. That's been faithful. Even when we don't deserve it, you still show forth your love. We surrender to your love, oh God. We surrender to your love, oh God. We receive your love, oh God. We thank you for your love. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness towards us. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your love. Your reckless love that demands all common sense. We thank you for your love. Aren't you grateful for his love? I'm just grateful that it never ran out on me. It never ran out on me. It's your Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Are you ready for the word? I'm ready for the word. As we continue in the motor worship, I want you, we have a guest speaker who's, he's actually, from, used to live here, he's a big brother of mine. But if you will, direct your attention to the IMAX as we receive Dr. Philip L. Pointer Sr. is the senior pastor of St. Mark Baptist Church, one of the largest Baptist churches in the state of Arkansas. Pastor Pointer has grown the St. Mark ministry by leaps and bounds, achieving major installments of community outreach offerings such as job fairs, financial stewardship classes, record and seminars, and food drives. Having now served as a senior pastor for 15 years, Pastor Pointer's journey as a pastor began in October 2002 with an assignment at St. John Baptist Church in Alexandria, Virginia. In conjunction with fostering the spiritual growth and advancement of St. John, Pastor Pointer earned a Master of Divinity degree with honors from the Samuel DeWitt Proctor School of Theology at Virginia Union University in Richmond, Virginia. In addition to his assignment at St. Mark, in August 2019, Philander Smith College appointed Pastor Pointer to the institution's faculty as Associate Professor of Philosophy and Religion and Chair of the Department of Philosophy and Religion. Dr. Pointer resides in Little Rock, Arkansas with his wife, Kia, and their three children. First Baptist, let's give a warm welcome to Dr. Philip Pointer Sr. You can stand to your feet and give a warm First Baptist welcome to my big brother, Pastor Philip Pointer! Bless you. Would you take a moment and join me in prayer? And let's ask the Lord to bless our time in the Word today. Lord, it's preaching time, and uh, our collective prayer is simple but strong. We just want you to speak because your servants are listening. God, you know the frailty of my flesh, and so I'm praying that you gather the scattered fragments of my strength and breathe upon me. Would you please use me as an instrument in your hand? Anoint me with fresh oil so that I can be clear and precise in the explanation of your truth. 
then grace us with listening ears receptive hearts and most significantly responsive lives help us to be better when we leave than we were when we came that's my sincere prayer would you save those who are lost would you reclaim those who are backslidden would you strengthen the believer and would you do all of that while getting the glory for yourself and we're careful to be sure that no one takes your glory but we'll give it all to you because you're the only one who deserves it we thank you for these things and all things and count them done by faith because we pray them in the strong name of your son who is our savior and the believers together said amen and amen can you clap your hands one more time in the presence of the lord i was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the lord you may be seated thank you for standing with me and let me honor our great god and god's son the lord jesus christ who is our savior the holy spirit who comforts and guides us by whom we're sealed until the day of redemption and help me celebrate our pastor, First Baptist. Can we celebrate Pastor John K. Jenkins, Sr.? Amen. Our man of God. And uh, I, I reminded him in the back, Reverend, you is my Reverend. So you is, I'm grateful to God for nearly 30 years of you pouring into me. And the last 20 as my pastor, it has been a joy, sir, uh, to be mentored, blessed, challenged, chastened, and chastised even on last night. Amen. Thank you uh, for your investing in me and uh, continually calling me to be uh, better, to, to be who God is calling me to be. Can we celebrate our first lady, Lady Trina? And Lord have mercy. What a picture of grace and and I don't want to do a lot of preliminaries, but I do want to say that uh, Lady Trina used to love me until I married Kia, and then <laughs> she put me down for Kia, my wife. So I just, you know, I don't know what I need to do to get back in, but any way you bless me, I'll be satisfied. I'm grateful. I'm grateful to be here uh, and to share with you my little brother Josh, man. What an amazing leader he is. What an amazing ministry and work you're doing, bro. I am just beyond, beyond proud, man, and, and pleased. And uh, thank you. Thank you for trusting me with these moments, Pastor Josh. Thank you all uh, for that. One of my great friends, my covenant brothers, accountability partners is with us, Pastor Kenneth Riolan from the Paramount Baptist Church in Washington, D.C. He came, snuck over. Appreciate you, bro. And, uh, and I'm grateful for his presence and his prayers. Would you come with me to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12? 2 Corinthians chapter 12, the first 10 verses of 2 Corinthians chapter 12. The English Standard Version of that text is what I'll be reading and I'm pray prayerful that this lesson will help and bless you. Second Corinthians 12, the first 10 verses, here's what the word of the Lord says. I must go on boasting, though there is nothing to be gained by it. I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know God knows. And I know that this man was caught up into paradise. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know God knows. And he heard things that cannot be told, which man may not utter. On behalf of this man, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast except of my weaknesses. Though if I should wish to boast, I would not be a fool, for I would be speaking the truth, but I refrain from it so that no one may think more of me than he sees in me or hears from me. So to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations a thorn was given me in the flesh a messenger of Satan to harass me 
to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I'd like to tag our time in this passage. Stop being so strong. Stop being so strong. One of the most famous people in the world is not a person, it's a puppet. Kermit the Frog. Known literally around the world, recognizable for his unique voice, pattern of behavior, and in these later days, he is the king of memes, Kermit the Frog. If we were to flash his picture on the screen, you would immediately recognize Kermit's face, his body. If you were to hear his voice, you would know it without having to listen for very long. But the reality is, Kermit is a lifeless piece of felt. This famous, popular, well-known entity has nothing to him. Until Jim Henson and those who have since come behind him put their hand in Kermit, put their hands on the sticks that control his movements, their hand controlling his mouth and their voice speaking as they move his lips. Kermit is seen, but he's nothing without the puppeteer. I think we live in a day where we forget that without God's hand in us and God's power on us, we would be lifeless, listless, useless pieces of felt like Kermit the Frog. And while people might see your performance and your purportment, while they might see what seem to be the signs and trappings of success, prosperity, and power, the reality is, friend, you're nothing until he puts his hand in you. And, and that, that is where the apostle Paul wants to finally lay his anchor as he proves his apostolic authority to the people who are questioning whether or not he is who he says he is. He says, I have concrete evidence that God's hand is on my life. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is using me, that the gospel flowing from me is dynamic and powerful. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that what I am doing in life is making an eternal difference to others and the reason I am sure that I am being used by God is because I'm so weak and dependent. I wish I had church this morning. I'm saying to you, I'm saying to you that, that, that what he does is what we ought to do. It, it's turned the idea of what we celebrate about ourselves inside out. Rather than presenting yourself as an expert or an influencer or someone who knows everything and can conquer all of life's issues, the reality is you and I must learn to appreciate the confirmation of controversy. 
so that when I'm trying to prove that God is using me, I don't use the things I have accomplished or the things I have accrued. I use the realities of the afflictions I am enduring because it is when I admit and acknowledge that I am weak that I actually get to the place where I'm walking in divine strength. And all I'm trying to say, church, is the simple central truth of this lesson is that truly gifted people should lean into our weaknesses because when we do that, we actually lean on God's strength. Did you hear it? I want to say it again. I said truly gifted people should lean into our weaknesses because when we do that, we actually lean on God's strength and stop pretending, stop being phony, stop being false, stop acting like you got life all together. Denial is not deliverance and pretense ain't power. It is when you say I am nothing, I am small, I am weak, I am insignificant that you become something and you become large and you become strong. I wish y'all were helping me here. I'm saying that what God is looking for from us is an admission of our need so that we can be recipients of the power to help us to do everything that God is calling us to do. Stop trying to pretend you're strong. No. I'm not I'm not I'm not strong. I got, I got to lean into my weaknesses because of doing that is what lets me lean on God's strength. Paul is saying, I know I'm an apostle and I got some accomplishments I could brag about, but instead I'm going to brag about my afflictions. And he teaches us, y'all, if you take a walk with me through this passage, he teaches us what it looks like to live in strong weakness rather than in weak strength. I feel like preaching right now. Here it is. Here's what he says. He says, he says, the first thing you've got to do is to develop a proper perspective about your pain. That if, if you're going to live in strong weakness rather than in weak strength, you've got to develop a proper perspective about your pain. He says, he says, I can brag about some stuff. I, I knew a man 14 years ago who was caught up in the third heavens. Paul is talking about himself in the passage. Speaking about himself in the third person. He won't even call his own name when he speaks about this high holy, incredible, ecstatic experience. He says, I don't even know if I was in the body or out of the body. I don't know if it was a vision or if I was actually transported to the third heaven. The third heaven is, is that unseen spiritual world. The first heaven is the sky where the uh, birds fly and planes fly, where clouds are. That's first heaven. The second is outer space. That's, the, that's where the, the moon and the stars and the sun are, the planetary uh, bodies. That's, that's, that's the second heaven. The third heaven is an unseen um, world beyond the physical it, it, it is it is where God exists in God's transcendent self above all filling all um, God is omnipresent filling all time and space simultaneously and yet transcendent outside of all time and outside of all space from everlasting to everlasting you are God he he says I saw him I was up there and I saw stuff I'm not even allowed to speak I heard things I'm not allowed to repeat but I got up there, came back here, and then verse 7 says, so that I don't become conceited, he, he gave me a thorn. He, he gives me a thorn. Can, can I make up a word? I'm a black preacher. They let us do that sometimes. What's braggable about your life? You got to choose whether you're going to brag on your thrones or are you going to brag on your thorns? Most of us brag on our thrones because that's what we see on social media. Our feeds are filled with personal affirmations and personal assertions about who we are and about what we deserve and about who we ain't going to like no more and who we going to cut off and, and we match in energy because we have a mind that says I deserve thrones when the reality is you at your highest is not necessarily you at your best. 
You with all the friends in the world, you with more money than you can count, you with all things going well in your relationship and love life, you with a social connections to reach high people in high places, to have all of that stuff is good, but listen, if you don't have your feet firmly planted on the ground, you can have a high experience and still be a low life. So God loves you too much to only give you thrones. He says, I love you so much, I'm going to gift you a thorn because you need some pain to stay on purpose. You need some pain to remind you to pray. You need some pain to remind you you didn't get where you are because you're cute, smart, and lucky. You need some pain to remind you that God's hand has to be on your life if you're going to be anything and go anywhere and accomplish anything. It's going to be because of God. That verse 7 says the thorn was given me, literally gifted to me. Happy birthday, here's your thorn. Merry Christmas, here's your thorn. The stuff you want to get rid of is the stuff you need to keep you in a place where you are dependent and usable by God. I wish I had a witness in First Baptist. I'm saying to you that God says your pain that you've been cursing, your pain that's made you upset, your pain that has caused you to say, God, why me? Your pain that you say, maybe God doesn't love me. Your pain is a gift from God sometimes. It's a grace from God sometimes. It's a reminder that he's got great things for you, but he's got to keep you tethered and tied to him because if you only have the great things and you forget about the great God, you'll make a great mess. So I need to hold you with me tightly and I got to use pain to maintain the connection sometimes. I gotta have a proper perspective. But I told I told the earlier service, I told the early service, um the 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 the, the peacock, y'all know that peacock with that bright plume of tail feathers? The the peacock, um, um that, that, that's, those feathers are for mating purposes to attract, is the men that have them is to attract the females of the species. But but sometimes Brother Peacock um just is excited about his feathers. So for no reason, no purpose at all, he'll spread those big tail feathers. And that's cute if you're in the zoo, bro, Peacock. But in the wild, you have predators around you. And when you spread your feathers for no reason, it makes you slow and an easy target. This is why we have the saying, proud as a peacock or strutting like a peacock. And when you're in the wild, brother peacock, all these mongooses, all these jungle cats, stray dogs, leopards, tigers everywhere, the peacock is in the wild. He is an easy prey. He's fast food because when he gets full of himself and spreads his feathers, he's easy to catch. Can I tell you, ego makes you easy. Ego makes you easy to offend. It makes you easy to upset. It makes you easy to anger. It makes you easy to discourage. It makes you easy to distract. Stop posting your whole life on Instagram and stop trying to be TikTok famous. Put your feathers down. You're not in the zoo. You're in the wild. And Satan is walking about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And when you post all of your trips and all of your outings and all of your friends and all of your booze, then the devil knows right where to hit you to mess with your faith, to mess with your sense of esteem, to mess with your mind, to get you to say, God doesn't love me, or folks have forgot, put your feathers down. Be humble. You'll be happier if you put your feathers down. You'll have more peace if you put your feathers down. You'll enjoy the vacation better if you stop taking pictures. We know what the beach looks like. Put your feathers down because God says I can use you when you stay humble enough to learn how to appreciate the pain. Can I, can I, 
Pastor, can I tell somebody I didn't tell the earlier service? I didn't, I didn't tell the earlier service this because I like y'all better. Um, the, the, Paul says, this is a messenger of Satan. This thing got me, this thing got me, Steve, because it's a messenger of Satan that Paul says, God gifted me the thorn. That, that, that idea, messenger, literally translates to angel, Jason Ray. It's the word angel. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's Satan's angel comes to give me this thorn. And it, it boggles my mind because it seems as if my pain is the result, result of a sovereign and satanic conspiracy. God gets in league with the devil to give me a pain Satan wants to afflict me with for a purpose God wants to assist me with. I don't know if y'all hear what I'm trying to say. So there are times when even God permits the devil to have access to a space or a place in your life to, to find your soft spots so that God can use Satan's negativity to produce in you some spiritual benefit and positivity. So before you go rebuking and binding, you need to ask God, God, is there purpose in this pain? Is there a reason in this pain? Is there a reason I'm being lied on and talked about? About. Is there a reason my friends have stabbed me in the back? Is there a reason even when I'm not alone, I feel lonely? Is there a reason while I'm dealing with constant physical affliction? Is there a reason while the marriage is rocky right now? God, show me the purpose behind the pain so that I can properly manage and assess and therefore apply the lessons of what you're trying to teach me. I need to get a proper perspective. I got to go. Um, it, it's... If, if, if I'm gonna live in 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 weak strength uh, or in, in in strong weakness rather than weak strength, I gotta I gotta develop a proper perspective on my pain. But wait, wait, I also have to learn how to live with what God will not take away. Here's the thing: I got this thorn. And it's not an overnight thorn. We're not talking about microwave pain. He says I prayed three times. And I said, take it, take it, take it. And God said, no, no, no. Um, I know you can shout when God takes trouble away. But how's your praise faring when God lets trouble linger? Can you still shout and run and dance and praise if it never becomes like you want it to be? I mean, if this is it, if this is all, if this is the final stopping place for your earthly experience, if it never gets better, can you praise him like it is? And some would say, this is deficient faith. I know God can and I know God will. And yes, God can and yes, God will sometimes. My father would say this, my father would say, we say God is good all the time and all the time God is good, but that's not true. My father says God is good all the time. No, God is good a lot of times. Then he's better at other times. And we assess good based on our human, carnally constructed concept of what good is and what good feels like. It feels good or it looks good, so it must be good. And God says, no, man, that's wrong. You can't assess what's good based on your carnally constructed concept because it feels good and it looks good. Sometimes the best thing I can do for you is leave that thorn right where it is. Sometimes the best thing I can do for you is not give you the other job to keep you on this job with those hellish co-workers in the cubicle next to you sometimes the best thing I can do for you is tell you to stay in that marriage and learn how to forgive and learn how to work together sometimes the best thing I can do for you is keep you connected to them hard-headed kids so that you know what it feels like for God your father to be trying to raise you I gotta leave you with the thorn sometimes I've got to keep that in you because I've got something for you and I want to do something in you but a thorn is necessary so Lord help me to live with what you will not take away if I gotta live like this 
this, if I gotta cry like this, if I gotta struggle like this, if I gotta be like this, if I never get the house I want or the car I want, if it never comes my way in the way I want it to, come, Lord help me to see that you're still worthy of my praise and my adoration and my thanksgiving and my allegiance. Lord help me to stay in and to hold on and to be faithful and to do my job and to work out my ministry and to serve the kingdom and to bless your name because even with the thorn you are still worthy to be um, there was a commuter there was a commuter pilot from Portland, Maine to Boston, Massachusetts on a small little commuter jet. And uh, he noticed that the red indicator light on the dash, on the control panel, indicated that the back door of the plane uh, was not fully closed. He heard the rattling, and so he gave the uh, controls to his co-pilot, and he went back to close the door. They hit an air pocket, and he was pulled out of the plane over the ocean and 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 the co-pilot radioed in for an emergency landing they sent out helicopters boats trying to find what they believed to be his remains in the water they gave up the search after several hours came back to the airport that night and they found him this man's name was Henry Dempsey they found Henry Dempsey at the airport <laughs> he had been holding on to the back of the plane because life will pull you out of safe places it'll pull you out of relationships you thought you would always have it'll pull you out of financial security you thought wasn't going anywhere and what your job is is not to give up and just go lay in the ocean you got to hold on to whatever little bit you can grab on to because time is filled with swift transition and not on earth unmoved can stand so you got to build your hopes on things eternal and hold to God's unchanging hand covet not this world's vain riches that so rapidly decay seek to gain the heavenly treasures because they will never pass away and when your journey is completed if to God you have been true fair and bright your home in glory your enraptured soul will view hold to his hand the thorn ain't going nowhere but neither is God the thorn is there but so is God's power the thorn is there but so is the anointing the thorn is there but so is opportunity to watch God work wonders and miracles the thorn is there but so is God Last thing, last thing, last thing. I'm through, I'm through. Got to develop a proper perspective about your pain. You got to learn to live with what God will not take away. Last thing, you got to learn to embrace and celebrate the sufficiency of God's grace. Lord, why won't you take this thorn? Because my grace is sufficient. The, the idea of sufficiency there in the original language is the idea of independence. It is grace is independent. It does not need anything else to be effective. You don't need grace and money or grace and friends or grace and connections. If you got grace, it is sufficient would you wave at somebody and say I got everything I need cuz I got God's grace so you ain't got to like me you don't have to support me you don't have to pat me on the back you don't have to push me ahead I got grace so if you close the door in my face grace will just cut a hole in the wall if you deny me opportunity grace will put me on another platform to do what it is I'm called to do grace has a way of showing up to show you it is fully sufficient and I'm through when I say that God does not give Paul grace in response to the thorn the thorn is a window window through which Paul sees the grace that was always there. You are here today 
not because you're smart, not because you worked hard, not because you went to school. Whatever you have, wherever you are, it's been grace all along. I got to go, church. I got to go. It's been grace the whole time. So you can go and break down. You can have a cry. You can go ahead and say, I'm not going to make it anymore. I'm going to fall apart. But then get up, dust yourself off, and remember, I got everything I need because I got God's grace. I, if, if, if it never get, I got, I got to go. I got to go. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. My daughter, my daughter pastor, Gabby, is 23. She just finished her master's degree at Baylor. She's a master's grade at Baylor. She, but when she was in high school, especially her senior year, her senior year, I, I, I have had for several years um, this kind of little uh, uh, wallet phone holder where I have my cards and I would wake up in the morning and Gabby will have stolen my car and my debit card. She would steal it every morning, steal, steal it, steal it every morning. I'd wake up and my car and my card, and don't judge her too harshly because uh, 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 Lady Trina's friend, Kia, was complicit in the crime. <laughs> Just take your daddy's car. I'd wake up, here I am, pastoring, preaching, trying to do God's will, and wake up and have no ride. <laughs> And, 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 and Gabby, Gabby, Gabby would go out. And it was one thing, she would get lunch every day at, at school, her senior year, she got senior year, she would get lunch. It would be one thing, real, if she was just, if she was just feeding herself, but she was feeding the masses, men of every birth, Chick-fil-A, McDonald's, Subway, just, just, just. And I, one day I asked her, one day I asked her, I said, Gabby, how are you able to use my card? Your name is not on the account. You can't even forge my signature well. They see it's Philip, a male name, and you are clearly a female child. Why are you, she says, Dad, it's Little Rock. Everybody knows I'm your daughter. So that's why they let me use your name. That, that, that's what grace is, church. Grace is taking God's card and swiping it when I get sick, swiping it when I get in trouble, swiping it, and, and, and can you, can you, do I have anything in my account? Do I have anything in my righteousness account? Do I have anything in my power account? No, I'm bankrupt, I'm on the negative, I'm at zero, but I could use his card because I am his child. That's why they said amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Wave at somebody and say, that's my testimony. I'm not strong. I just got a strong God. I'm not strong. I just got a strong daddy. I'm not strong. I just have a strong spirit. I'm not strong. I just serve a strong Savior. Is there anybody here that your testimony is? I'm not strong, but he's been strong for me. He's come through for me. He's shown up for me. He's He's opened doors for me. He's made ways for me. I'm not strong, but grace has been blessing me. Grace has been keeping me. Grace has been holding me. Grace has been protecting me. Grace woke me up this morning. Grace put the shoes on my feet I have. Grace put these clothes on my back and grace climbed up a hill called Calvary. Grace stretched out his arms took nails for me. Grace stretched out his feet and took a spike for me. Grace died one Friday but that's not how the story ends. Sunday morning Grace got up with all power. Good afternoon, y'all. But wave at somebody and say, stop being so strong. Lean on him. Count on him. Call on him. Rely on him. Tell him, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Yeah, every hour. 
I holler sometimes when I get happy. Yeah! you to bother somebody real quick can I get you to turn to somebody and say neighbor we gotta go now but I need to give you a quick pop quiz just three questions I need three answers and then I'll let you go question number one is do you know him question number two is have you tried him question number three ain't he all right I said ain't he all right say yeah
this opportunity, right? This is a good time for somebody to receive his grace. So listen right here, right now, this is what I want us to do. I, I, I'm talking to the people who have never, who have never accepted the grace, who have never put their faith in Jesus Christ. If you have never experienced or accepted this grace that we are shouting about, what I want you to do is really quick, if you're scared to come by yourself, ask somebody to come with you. But if you need the grace of Jesus, right now I want you to make your way out of the aisle, out of your row, and come meet me right now, quickly. Jesus wants to forgive you today. Come on, sister. Hallelujah! It's his grace. It's his grace. Come on, come right now. If you, if you want to accept Jesus Christ, if you're in a backsliding state, you, you have turned your way away from, a fa you, from, your, from, from the faith, if you're unsure and you want, to, you want to get reassurance today, God is going to forgive you today. Now, some of us have been living with those thorns and we feel we've done things that we don't deserve God's forgiveness, but I got good news for you today. He wants you. He wants to love you. He wants to forgive you. He wants to cover you. So if, this, that, if that is you, you've never accepted Jesus, come here. I know this is a big church. I know this might be intimidating, but don't let the enemy keep you in your seat. I see you, bro. I see you, I see you, I see you. I see you, I see you, I see you. Yep, let him come. Let him come, let him come. That's right, that's right. That's right, hallelujah, can we give God praise? No matter where you are in the building, if you're in the balcony, come make your way right here, right now. I, sir, I see you, I see you, I see you. Y'all gotta keep praising as they come. Y'all gotta keep praising God as they come. Listen, this is, this is a time, this is, this, what this is, is we're just allowing you time to realize this is us offering God's eternal forgiveness for you. You know, I know a lot of times, you know, you hear preachers say, well, if, if, if you did, if you died today, where would you end up? And I don't want to scare you into this decision. I want you to make a conscious decision to say, you know what? I need that forgiveness. I need that grace. There is nothing that you have done that Jesus did not and has not died already for. Come receive this grace. That's right, I see you coming, bro. I see you coming, brothers. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm glad to see through eyes of love a hopeless case, an empty space, if not for grace. Now, I know what you're saying. There, there, there's, some, there's somebody right now that's, as people are still coming in the building, there's somebody online. Uh, who feels they might not be able to get connected to him. There's information on the screen. We have people waiting to talk to you. No matter where you are in the world, you can get connected and be forgiven for your sins and accept Jesus even online. You can even join this church online. If, if you want to join this church, you want to be a part of this body of Christ, in the building, come online. Go to the, you can call that number, you can click the commit button.
come be a part of this brand. This is a good church. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. They're still coming, y'all. They, they're still coming. Come get this grace. It's hot. Come get this grace. Come get this mercy. Come get this forgiveness right now. Need a male counselor? Amen. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we give God praise for these souls, for all these souls? It's not too late if you want to come, come on. If it's not too late, it's not too late. If you want to come, come on. It's not too late. It's not too late. In moments like this, in moments like this, you feel a tug. You feel, I don't want nobody to judge me. I don't want people to look at me. I, 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 I'm too scared to go up there. Uh, but if I told you, if I told you, the thing that could save your life is right here. You would make your way out of your seat. I'm gonna give up just a couple more moments, please, y'all. Just a, this is the most important part of the service. You don't have to be strong. You don't, would you stop trying to be so strong? All I'm asking you to do, or asking you to do, is come lean on your weakness. Because when you lean on your weakness, you are leaning on God. You ain't gotta be perfect to come up here. Is there anybody else? Is there one more? Now real quick, ask your neighbor, say, is it you? Do I need to walk with you? Are you scared? Turn around, be real. Ask him seriously, look him in the eyes. Say, do you need to go up there? Because I will walk with you. If it's you, let's go. Ask him, just say, do I need to walk with you? Are you scared? I'll walk with you, I'll walk with you. I'll walk with you. You need to join the church or you need Jesus. I'll walk with you. All right. Let's pray over, let's pray over these, these souls right here. Lord, I thank you. I bless you. I pray God that you will meet each person, each child, each adult, each father, mother, sister, brother, auntie, cousin, where they are. God, you say in your word that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, the Lord Jesus Christ, that, that we shall be saved. So God, I pray for repentance. I pray for your redemptive love right now in Jesus' name. We thank you, we bless you, amen. Now listen to me. Uh, the person behind you is a counselor. They're gonna take you back into a room, share some information with you, pray with you. And you're going to leave out of here today different with some, with some different kind of grace. Amen? Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Give it God praise for the souls. For all this grace that's walking out of the door. All this grace. Amen, amen. Be seated real quick. We're going to leave. We're going to depart in just a minute. But was anybody else blessed by that word like I was blessed by that word? Big brother, Pastor Pointer, we thank you for tearing us up this, this afternoon. So if, we, if that word blessed you, we wanna, we wanna honor the man of God, amen? We wanna, we wanna take up an offering so that God can restore him and Give, you know, we want to take care of the man of God so that God can continue to push him and his ministry because he has blessed us today. Amen. So yeah. if you want to give, you can, you can uh, write a check or you can go, the information is going to come up on the screen. You can go to our website, you can click uh, give. You can, if you're writing a check, you can make it out to FBCG in the memo. If you want to put guest uh, preacher, guest speaker, you can do that. We are going to make sure it goes to him. However, if you want to give directly to Pastor Pointer, 
His cash app is going to come up on the screen. You can give directly to his cash app. However, uh, just understand that that is a non-taxable taxable donation. Amen? So if you give it to him, it is non-tax deductible. Make sense? It is non-tax deductible. Just want to make sure. If you want to give right to him, you can do that. Amen? Let's pray over the offering and the man of God. Lord, we thank you for this time, this day. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the messenger. So God, I pray that you will bless this offering. Allow it to be a blessing to Pastor Pointer, his family, his church, that you continue to spread his wings and take him beyond his dreams. We thank you for his obedience to you. Thank you for my brother. Restore him. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you. Let's stand, Pastor. Let's stand as we depart. Give God one more shout of praise for that word. I want to thank Pastor and First Lady for letting the young adults lead the service. Can y'all give it up for the young adults, all the young adult ministry represented in the house? I pray God keep you cover you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ rest upon you in your coming and in your going. In Jesus' name, be blessed. Amen. God bless you. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family, and your children, and their children. Welcome back, welcome, welcome back. I don't know about y'all, but I'm weak. I'm weak. Okay? I'm tired. I'm tired. I mean, listen, if you are just joining us, you missed our pre-show, I am Tam Cease, one of your co-hosts this morning, and I am joined by my beautiful baby sister, the lovely Asian Nicholson. Say hey, girl. Hey, girl. <sighs> listen, Dr. Pointer, Pastor Pointer, we don't know if you can come back. So. Yeah. I, it, was I, a, it was a bit offensive to me. How about that? Because you was in my business. All up in it. All in my mix. All in mm -hmm. my business. How timely 
was that word. How, was it timely for you, as timely as it was for me? It was so timely. Hashtag timely in the chat. Hashtag if it was it timely for you, and that was a word that you needed, you know someone who mm-hmm. needed it as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, wow. Ooh. I think also the fact that it was done right before our church slowdown. Book. Yeah. The fact that we now get to reevaluate mm-hmm. what God has called us to do yeah. and to do it well, and the fact that we can lean into his grace mm-hmm. to properly rest. I love wow. that. And I love the title of Stop Being So Strong. Yeah. That actually knocked me down. I actually yeah. had to bring it back. Because <laughs> actually when he gave the title, I kind of yeah. checked out for a minute. Because I said, Lord, what are we about to do in the next yeah, 30 yeah, minutes? Yeah. Lord, are we about to do this? Are we about to do this? <laughs> but just this essence of just leaning into your weaknesses so mm-hmm. God can show up and be strong. Mm-hmm. Like we're not called to do any Anything. of this by ourselves, but mm-hmm. to hear someone say from the pulpit to lean into your weaknesses like that's lean big. into it lean into it recognizing what it is yeah. and knowing that in all of this his strength works better mm. better Literally. how about that mm. it's it's greater when when i'm a chill go ahead please me, please go ahead child please give me, give I, me a takeaway I what think, you get oh my takeaway that i'm allowed to be human yeah that's good i am that's good not some God. Mm. I am not God. I'm not Christ. And thank God that I'm not. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) How about that? I don't have the mercy for every person on earth. He does. And the fact that I can show reverence to a God that is not offended by my burdens. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, Whoa. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah. I can't wait to be weak. I'm going home and taking a nap. <laughs> okay. Go home and get knocked. Go. Right now. <laughs> Out of there. Huh? <laughs> Listen. So he had literally 2.7 million points on today. Okay. Mm-hmm. Gather, the, gather them Absolutely. all. Thank you. Thank you to the iCloud for syncing what's <laughs> in the phone to the iPad for this moment. Okay. But one of the points that he said that was so profound was don't measure God's hand in your life based on your accomplishments. Yes but by your afflictions. Yes. Afflictions are an affirmation of your assignment. Whoa. And I'm going to piggyback that point to when he said, um, um, help me, Holy Ghost. Give it to me. Give it to me, Lord. Boom. Give it to me. Boom. Um, that in your weak self, it allows God to do yes. the spectacular. Yes. And sometimes we get so caught up in our accomplishments. First of all, I'm going to put a poster right there. And let's talk about the peacocks, how the peacocks be peacocking. Okay, because why are they doing that? that? Thing, because that tore me down. Because the... For what? Okay. Listen, but we get so caught up in mm-hmm. us, mm-hmm. what we've done, our mm-hmm. accomplishments, mm-hmm. our highlights. We mm-hmm. love the highlight reel mm-hmm. of ourselves. Mm-hmm. But that is what the people of God need to hear the most of. Here are my afflictions. These mm-hmm. are my persecutions. These are my hardships. That mm-hmm. to me is what makes God so mm-hmm. real. And mm-hmm. I'm immediately turned off when the peacocks be peacocking. Because mm-hmm. we be quick to mm-hmm. be out here peacocking mm-hmm. with your feathers all out. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. And people people completely mm-hmm. miss it. But when mm-hmm. you express that humanity, mm-hmm. right? This is who I am. This is what I struggle with. Mm-hmm. These are the thorns mm-hmm. that I have. It makes the throne of God more realistic and more practical. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He, mm, that was, mm-hmm. that was good. That was good for mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. Put and your feathers down. I think mm-hmm. too that the, the people who often go the highest or have the largest platforms often have the, the saddest and the mm-hmm. most ha- hurtful testimonies yeah because they don't do it out of their own strength nor do they do it for the glory mm-hmm. of themselves mm-hmm. they have to do it for something bigger than them lest they be defeated by yeah. their own greatness and i think that that is just so gracious of god to allow us the full humanity of himself and ourselves yeah with also a provision of grace that's good whoa how about that thank you Jesus. thank you god for grace Thanks, and, and man and when you really wrap your mind just around grace itself like when you really sit and think about who you are what God's allowed you to endure the assignment he's given on your life and how in the midst of all of these things happen he still bestows grace upon you it's enough to knock your socks off you shouldn't be grace that we don't even know about that you don't even know about grace how about how about that get out of here it's none of it in the DMs how Uh, about that not on not Amazon Prime at all but it's the grace that you don't even know about and you're like God thank you for loving me in spite of me yeah, listen, if this if this message did anything for you, we definitely want to definitely plug Pastor Pointer's uh, cash app. Yes. We want to do that again. Definitely, listen, plant a seed, a tree, 
a bush, an arboretum, plant, <laughs> huh? Listen, a botanical mm, garden. A botanical garden. Go on ahead and sow that seed because it was an, an incredible it was message. Fruitful. And his cash app is the dollar sign uh, Dr. P.L. Pointer. So please mm -hmm. make sure that you do that. I think they're going to show that on the screen. So we definitely want to make sure yes, we do. that we plug that. So tomorrow starts Slow Down Slow Month. Slow Down Month. Slow Down Month. Here at the First Baptist Church of Glenarden, we take the month of August to really talk about what Pastor Pointer hit today, rest, right? Where our only um, coming together Esqueness is on <laughs> Sunday. Communion. Communion. <laughs> it's on Sunday, um, but we still just need that time to just kind of sit and reflect. And I love yes. how you said that to just really sit and think about that thing that God's called you yeah. to do yeah. and plan accordingly for yes. when we come back. Yes. Yeah, we're so excited. Yes. And I think that we have College Spirit Day yes. coming up here at the First Baptist Church of Glenarden. So whether you're a, a, a part of the OC or you're in person or maybe you just want to show up and peek your head and with and repping your college that could be an institute that could be a school that you really love maybe you, you went right into the workforce but you really like a college team yeah. rep it rep we it. love to see it we can't wait to commune with you on Sunday. Love it, definitely. And especially to all of um, kids going to high school yes. and you may be going to college next year, let us know where you've accepted or anybody in the ninth through 11th grade and you just kind of want to say, hey, there's some colleges I'm thinking about. Definitely wear that gear. Special, you want to shout out your school Do you want or schools because listen. Prince George's okay. Community College, UMBC, <laughs> American University, and Denver Seminary. How about that? Listen, and listen, if, if you're listening wherever you are, <clears throat> if you attended the Hampton University, <laughs> home by the sea. If you hear that, that the noise in the background there, that would be Pastor Bishop Elder Stephen Hurd as he is representing Howard, Howard University. University. Uh, we're all one. Yeah. And Morgan. There's, there's also Morgan State in the background. Thank you, Pastor KD. Anyone else? We want else? y'all to rep. Y'all see, we love our school here at First Baptist. Okay. So definitely next Sunday, wherever you are joining us from, make sure that you rep uh, your college and participate in College Spirit Day. This is good, yeah? This is good. Dope Sunday. We love you all. Thank you so much for tuning in with us. Have the best day and an incredible week on purpose. Take care. We'll see you next week.